podcast that I don't shake hands or anything like that. Okay. But Michael's going to come over and put a microphone on you, okay? Hi. How you doing? All right, how are you? I'm going to come across. Thank you. Put it on your shoulder over here. Tell you what, can you pull your hair up for me on this side just for now? Okay. And then uh, all of it. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Right. You can feel that humidity from that rain outside. Yeah. How are you today? I'm all right. How are you, sir? Can't complain. Can't complain. What's your name? Craig McKee. Okay. Uh, I wrote you back. Uh, you may not have received either. I don't know. Can you tell me what the letter says? I don't know how the mail. I haven't received it yet. Came yeah. through or how yeah. often it comes through uh, when I send What it did back. you say? I just acknowledged that that uh, I received your your letter and that I was reaching out to request this. And, yeah. And here we are. Okay. <laughs> so. Um. Before before we start, I would just like to ask if we could stick to the topic of what I wrote you about and mm -hmm. not my case, not my court case. All right. Okay. Um, I will I will say that um, we're going to talk about what you wrote about. Okay. And uh, obviously, as a journalist, I have to ask certain certain things. You can reply however you want to reply. Okay. Um, so, um, but I, there's no way I could go back, you know, okay. uh, being in this profession by by doing that. Um, one thing, just so I don't forget about it, I did come across the. There's a Facebook page, yeah, that sends a lot of support your way, yes, and pictures. And it sounds like whoever runs it is in regular contact with you to get new pictures mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Do you know who runs this? Um, is it a friend or a relative? It's a friend. It's a friend. Um, I can give you a better Facebook page to go to for. Um, well, I don't know if it's better, but it's different and it's okay. more personal. It's run by um, my. Uh, best friend, my older sister. I call her my older sister. Okay. Um, it's Shana Hubers at Shana Michelle Hubers. Okay. And my friend Tiffany Egan runs it. Egan E. E G A N. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, just because this this site was asking for donations and stuff too, so I wasn't sure really who. Who that was tied to. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, here we are. Thanks again for making time uh, for us. So the big question tied to tied to your letter. Um, it appears that you've fallen in love. Yes. How did that happen? Um, I can only describe it as um, like a spiritual encounter that I had with another person that I met here a couple of years ago that I grew to know over the years, mm -hmm. and we just got really close and. Um, you know, we're both forced into a similar situation, and um, Unique and I um, have a lot in common, and we just grew very close over the years. Mm -hmm. So, when you first met Unique, Unique obviously was arrested. Um, Richard McBee goes by Unique, yes. obviously. Um, January tenth of twenty sixteen. So, when did you after? That I met McBee um, that summer of twenty sixteen when I returned for. My new trial. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I left Campbell County Jail and was transferred south of here in January of 2016, right after he arrived. So I didn't meet him until, I didn't meet Unique, he, she, until that, that summer. Right. To, to, to me, I don't see Unique as a gender. I don't see Unique as a man or a woman. I see Unique as a soul that I love. So if I slip up in my wording, it's because to me, this is a person that I love. It's not about this person's gender. I think it can be easy to slip Although up. Although, it, it, and it is, and it's difficult for others to understand. Sure. So, yeah. um, when did you, I have the affidavit that you sent me that shows May 2nd as your request to get a marriage license. Was that just what, on the paper you sent me, or did, do you have a different date that you actually requested I believe it was the same date. Okay. I believe it was the same date. Okay, so you wrote me shortly after you actually made the request. It was in the same time frame, I believe. Okay. Um, have you heard back from anyone yet? We have not. And um, we've both had people calling um, the Campbell County Clerk's Office. And in my opinion, I feel like we're being spun already. And... Um, I feel as if I've already been retaliated against, so. Even if it's only been seven days? Yes. I mean, do you have confirmation they received your request? Um, no, I do not. I, I feel as if I've been 
retaliated against at the actual institution at the at the jail because the jailer was contacted by Richard McBee, mm -hmm. Unique Taylor, about our um, marriage, and um, within hours of his request to the jailer, letting the jailer know what was going on, and that he didn't want any type of retaliation, um, I I was moved to a different cell, mm -hmm. and. Um, all of my legal documents for my court case were taken from me and they were taken to the administration office on the other side of the jail and they have not been given back to me. They were seized and um, I feel as if our constitutional First Amendment right to marry because Unique is biologically a male and I'm a woman are being violated and we're being retaliated against due to my high profile case and you know my name in Cincinnati and unique status as a transgender woman also unique has not been retaliated against because unique just won a federal appeal for retaliation against the jail so unique's not being retaliated against no one has hurt unique or gone into unique cell and done anything to unique but i was retaliated against and that's how i perceive it Okay. At least not yet. At least no one has done anything too unique yet because, you know, there is this fear um, with this open lawsuit that he has against the jail. So he's being left alone. I'm being retaliated against. It already seems unfair. And um, I mean, that's your perception, obviously without confirmation that they've actually received your, your request, which we are going to reach out and try to see if they, if they have it. That's in my perception. You're yeah. correct. That's, that's have my you spoken with any other inmates that have, have requested marriage certificates and marriage licenses? I should say. I know, I know plenty of inmates in the Kentucky department of corrections who have been married in mm -hmm. Kentucky DOC, you know, Campbell County, to, to, uh, sorry, Campbell County jail is, um, part of Kentucky department of corrections. Okay. And so, I'm just curious if they said that it, well, it typically takes two weeks, three weeks, whatever, for you to hear anything back. I wonder if they clarified anything to you, those other inmates. No, nothing okay. has been um, clarified to me about a time frame, but I do know that it's something that can be done and has been done and has recently been done in Kentucky DOC. Okay. Yeah. Um, so again, Richard McBee is official name. Um, kind of explain to me, I mean, I know obviously from his writings and from your writings who he identifies as, but... Kind of explain to me, who is Richard McBee today? Richard McBee has a past that I would believe is not indicative of who he is today. Um, who Unique Taylor is to me today is a wonderfully sensitive, charismatic, brilliant, amazing, and highly naturally intelligent and capable as a person. Mm -hmm. um, he's from a wonderful background um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, his mother is a doctor and um, his father was very successful as well. Um, he doesn't belong here. He's not guilty um, in his case and he's fought the justice system here for years. He's defending himself very adequately. Explain though how he identifies himself. He doesn't identify himself as Richard McBee, why? He believes that he has the soul of a woman. Mm -hmm. And I accept unique Richard, Richie, as I, as I call unique sometimes, as, as who she is, who he is. To me, it's not about gender. To me, it's about a soul that I love. Mm -hmm. And so, it's but about- But he identifies as a transgender, woman who's lesbian that's a transgender lesbian, lesbian woman but he his his ability to transition has been thwarted by the number of years that he has spent in the justice system in the federal justice system and the state when, when you first met him though did he or she identify as hi hey, i'm unique or how did that how did that happen did he have to explain the backstory uh, how did that there was some explanation that yeah. was involved and, um, you know, um, I feel like, um, you know, unique is 
not to me a name or a, a, a he or a she. This is a person that I've called by six different names. I've, you know, in the justice system, we're often referred to by our last name. I've called Unique McBee, Richard. Mm. Um, he used to have a nickname he went by too. I've called him Richie, Unique. Right. It's not about it's not about a name to me. Did it's you about, meet in the commissary? I mean, how does I don't know how you meet each other whenever you're in a facility like this. Is it you know during lunch and you bumped into each other and then that, um, that's how often you get to see each other or how does that work? I originally met McBee two years ago when I was taken to a recreation yard mm-hmm. that was next to um, Unique Cell, mm-hmm. and um, we just began talking and that was how it happened. So you're in a rec area. Is that an outdoor area? Then it's an indoor, indoor, indoor. area. Okay. Yeah, and and I just want to emphasize that how hard she has fought to defend herself and her case against this justicism here in uh, Northern Kentucky. Um, some may say because you've obviously, obviously you're you're going through your retrial and your procedures mm-hmm. going through it. Some may say that um, this is more by reaching out, this is more of either a publicity stunt or something to derail your, your second trial. What would, you, what would you say to somebody that says that? This is no stunt. We, we actually genuinely love each other. I, I love Richie, Unique, Richard, Devon McVie, um, I, Junior, <laughs> um, and to me it's no, it's nothing but real. It's nothing but um, genuine love that we feel for one another and he would tell you the same so there uh, he has written he's written extensively actually on on that very point okay um, so this isn't tied to any justification on trying to move the, the case out of Campbell County or or any gameplay as it pertains to no your, your although I do feel that it's wrong that my case hasn't been moved out of Campbell County I do feel like I've been treated unfairly by Campbell County justice system and I and and that's a separate issue mm-hmm. it's it's something I still believe in but it's a separate issue and this is this has nothing to do with that mm-hmm. when you when you heard that your conviction was being thrown out and you were given the opportunity of a second trial were you was there relief was there, did you smile a little bit? Did you, did you have any reaction like, all right, I get another chance here? What was your reaction? I was obviously very happy. It was something that was very special to me and for my life. Do you think you can get a fair trial in the second round? I don't believe I can gain a fair trial in Campbell County. I don't believe that that's possible here in this county. Is that because of all the media coverage or why, why would you think that? I feel like there's a biased opinion against me here and um, that's one reason why we felt like we'd be retaliated against in in this situation Mm -hmm. it has not this has nothing to this is not a publicity stunt this is not BS we genuinely we genuinely love each other and have love for one another I feel that Richard is my soulmate the the change of venue is an entirely separate issue that I still feel strongly about Um. If I can go back, um, when you were with Ryan, though, did you identify as as bisexual, as lesbian? I guess I guess I'm trying to figure out how you know you've fallen in love with with. I don't Unique believe now. that I would label myself as straight, bisexual, lesbian. Mm-hmm. I am someone who has fallen in love with certain people. Okay. Um, I if you would have asked me five, six years ago, am I straight, am I bisexual, am I lesbian? I would have said I'm a you know, heterosexual woman. But things happen in your life and you meet people and you connect with people. And I have a connection that is very true and real. And um, what I feel for Unique is, is real. And what Unique feels for me is real. And I don't have a doubt about that in my mind. And that's all we're doing here is exercising our First Amendment right to become married. How often do you actually get to see each other? Like in an average week, how many times do you actually see each other? Physically see each other, I was, could be a certain number of days a week. It just depends on the way that it works out, yeah. Is that just because of 
I don't, I don't know, your rec times compared to eating times compared to the times you're allowed in the library. I mean, I'm not sure. Right. It's just, it just depends. Yeah. Um, how would this, how would this relationship work if you get married? Um, obviously there are a number of different avenues you could go down here. One, you have your retrial and you're found innocent and you're out. You have a retrial, found guilty, convicted, 40 year sentence or whatever that sentence ends up being. You're in, unique, goes through her process and is either found guilty or innocent. I mean, there are several different scenarios I could play out here. We're not, we're not concerned. I mean, we, we are concerned with, with the future, obviously, but we know that whatever happens, we will be in each other's lives. And that's what this is about to us is remaining in contact for the rest of our lives, no matter what happens. This isn't about, um, anything of a physical nature. This is about a spiritual, uh, mental and emotional connection that we have. This isn't about something physical. This is about a deep connection that we feel, um, you know, here. <laughs> it's not about um, anything of a carnal nature. So it's not about that to us. Because um, obviously there would be, there would be some hurdles to, to adjust to um, you know, if, if they approve everything. And I'm trying to find out, obviously, if there are any policies in place on how these are handled, if they can reject these requests. Um, if it is approved and, and say a week from now, you get the approval and you guys are allowed to, uh, to get married, then do you still think there's going to be retaliation or do you think, okay, it's ran its course, you guys raised the red flag here by, by getting us involved and, and everything was handled? Um, I believe there will still be retaliation on some level or that there could be, and I'm still concerned about that, yes. Um, if I can't, going back, because we did talk about whether or not you could have a fair trial. Uh, your attorney actually said the news coverage had painted negative image of you and had destroyed the presumption of innocence. I do believe that. And I do believe that there's been incredibly negative media coverage about me in Cincinnati and in the United States and internationally. Um, but I mean, the media coverage is tied to what was said in court and the evidence correct. presented on both sides. Correct. But I still feel like the media coverage has been, has been biased against me. And I feel like, um, it's going to be very hard for me to receive a fair trial in this area. Do you think it's difficult for, and we've seen a lot of changes obviously in the past year or so with the Me Too movement and more uh, recognition of women who are in potentially abusive relationships and more belief in what they've dealt with. Um, one, now that the Me Too movement has happened since your first trial and there's more awareness for the potential jurors on, on your background story and what you, what you say happened obviously that night um, and what you were dealing with, do you think that could play a role in that when you're talking about potential abuse that you dealt with and how this all came together and came to a, came to a head, so to speak, um, that that would help your case? I think that the Me Too movement, um, I think it could go either way. I think it could help. I think it could also hinder because some people could see it as crying wolf, that there's all these girls that feel the same way about men. And so I think that in that way, um, it could be negative, you know, but then I think it could also be positive because it's raising awareness that this happens all the time. And it often happens in situations where, um, no one would expect it to happen. Uh, in, in so many cases, and I know it's not this easy because I've, I've interviewed several people that have been in those types of situations. Um, is there ever a point that you have thought since 2012 and you say, if I could turn back the clock, I would just walk out of the condominium and I would leave? I don't want to talk about my case with you. I'm not here to talk about the nature of my case or what happened on October 12th. I'm here to I was here for a different reason today, and that was to address um, my marriage to um, Mr. McBee. Um, 
Have you ever had any moments of remorse or the sense of apology just to Ryan Poston's family? Not I'm going not into here, specifics I'm not about, here to talk about any of that. I'm here to talk about another issue at hand. Is this the first time since you've been in that you filed for a marriage license? Yes. Okay. It's been six years. Have you been romantically involved with anybody else while you've been in, or is this the first kind of love at first sight type? This has been the most serious. Most serious? Yeah. Okay. Um, your date has been pushed now to August. Are you, are you expected to stay here in this building? Until as far then? as I know. As far as you know. Um, I know Unique had sent me a number, of, uh, a number of pages. Some of this actually just arrived today. So he sent one one day and then sent one another. Sorry, she. Uh, it's okay. It's, I, I do the same thing. It's okay. Um, why did you... Uh, right in here, and you and Unique both put in here that you were only reaching out to Nine on Your Side. Why was that? We feel that Nine on Your Side has the courage to report our story um, fairly, and um, we appreciate that. So, have your attorneys talked about at all another? filing to try to move this trial? Since no. you have so many concerns about getting a fair trial? No, they have not. So the one, the one decision and that's basically it. Um, so what are you hoping, I guess, from, from this story and talking about, all right, you've fallen in love. Um, not that it, I know of, they have not. In, in us telling this story, are you hoping that either the jurors or officials in this county think differently about you? I mean, what's the, what's the takeaway? I'm not hoping that anyone thinks any differently of me. I'm just hoping that this ensures my right, um, my First Amendment right to marry under the U.S. Constitution. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm here for. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to preempt any retaliation and ensure that my right is respected and not thwarted and that I'm allowed to um, very unique. Have you gone through any special counseling since you've been in tied to, I mean, it's a broad range, anything from AA to anger management to family? I've issues. not been allowed any type of counseling here. This is a county jail. It's not a prison facility. But since you've been incarcerated since I mean, over your years. Since I've been incarcerated, I've not been, I've not been offered any type of counseling, no. Okay, so there's no certificates out there that are tied in your file or anything that shows that you've gone through any, uh, any specific uh, aggression no, counseling? No, because that's, that's not available at the detention center level. That's, that's not available in county jails. That's available at the state prison level, which I've never made. I've never made it that far. I've never made it to a state prison because um, the prisons were so overcrowded back in 2015 that when I was convicted even then, I never went to prison. I was bounced around from county jail to county jail, so I've never received any type of counseling. Mm -hmm. Have Ryan Poston's family, have they ever written to you? Not that I'm aware of. You've never physically received anything? No. Have you ever written to them? No. No. Okay. You have to understand, I kind of, I, I do have to ask, and you don't have to answer, yeah. uh, obviously. I know you recently had a birthday. Yes. April 8th. Yes. So happy belated birthday. Well, thank you. Um, how did you celebrate? Um, <laughs> uh, for my 27th birthday, I received a lot of cards and letters, and um, I was able to talk on the phone and visit with family and friends. So you do have, I mean, between this website, I know they put on this Facebook page, and you mentioned the other one, uh, the one here that, you know, are supporting you in your campaign. Um, do you get a lot of mail from perfect strangers just supporting you? And, sure. And, is that, a, is that a daily thing, weekly? Do you write back to them? Um, oftentimes I do, yes. Yeah. I get a, 
a fair amount of mail, depending on you know media coverage and what's out there, and mm -hmm. if something recent has happened. Have you received any other recent requests from any other media stations locally? Um, yes, years ago, and I can't. I can't recall exactly who it was. This was around the time of my first trial. It was over three years ago. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the money that's being raised off the Facebook page, what is that for? Is that for legal costs? Or? It's to aid in my defense, yes. Okay. That yeah. is solely for that. Do you know the email address, littletay58 at hotmail.com? That's what's tied to the donate part of PayPal. That's why I'm, I'm wondering. Little to L I T T L E T A Y fifty eight at hotmail dot com. Oh, I'm assuming that's my mother's email address because that would make sense that that's her. Yeah. Okay. Little Tay, that's her nickname that her sister gave her. So oh, okay. she had to make a new email address while I was in here, and she was born in 1958. That's, okay. I just put that together. Okay, so she yeah. handles she handles that Facebook page then, or no? No, she doesn't handle the she page. She handles the donation. She handles the donations. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and your parents, you speak to them on a regular basis? Yes. And they're still championing you, obviously? Yes. Very much so. I have, I have great parents. They still live in Lexington, though? Yes. And they still live, okay. Um, is there anything we haven't spoken about that you want to go on record with and talk about here? Yeah. Um, I mean, we have spoken about this, but it's just a point that I would like to make, and that this is not um, this is not for any other reason, but to um, ensure that we are given um, a fair right, you know, under the U.S. Constitution, First Amendment, um, that we're given the opportunity to exercise our rights and marry, um, and that this won't be rethorted thwarted or disrespected um, by anyone who dislikes us um, due to my status as a high-profile inmate, um, due to unique status as a transgender woman. Um, we are both pre-trial detainees awaiting trial. We're not convicted in this county. And um, that's one reason that we are um, doing this now before we are, you know, sent to trial and possibly convicted of anything. And possibly split up. Correct. Correct. So if, if that happens, if you, if you do lose your next trial and you are sentenced and you go your separate ways, have you had that discussion on we'll stay in touch, we'll write, we'll, yes. we'll continue this? Yes. We've had that discussion and that's what we've come to is that you know, we will continue our relationship no matter the obstacles. Um, long distance relationships can be tough. They can be. Um, okay. Well, you did, you did have a quote. You said, I don't know if anyone will ever want to marry me if they know that I killed a boyfriend in self-defense. But here you are filing a marriage license, which means you found someone. That's true. And Unique accepts me for who I am as much as I accept her for who she is. And um, Unique is very understanding of my past and not judgmental and um, loves me for who I am and loves me for anything I've been through or done mm -hmm. in my life. And um, I feel the same way about her. And I believe with all my heart that, that Unique is my soulmate. Has Unique asked specific questions about what you went through? Because um, obviously as partners, you know, you, that heart, you know, you, you obviously have to connect in that way. And I mean, we've spoken about um, a number of things in our lives. Um, and we have a very similar, we have a very similar past and um, we've been through some of the same things in our lives. So. Do you have concerns about uh, being recorded without your knowledge or... Uh, your phone calls and all the hours of phone calls that the, your attorney's now going through. Do you have any concerns about any, any of that going towards your second trial? Because there are hundreds and hundreds of hours of recorded phone calls. 
none of them have been recorded without my knowledge. Yeah. I don't believe. Right. Um, yeah, those are the jail, just the jailhouse phone calls. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have any concerns of any other recordings outside of that? No. Okay. Because I know you have concerns and I know Unique has concerns about documents being taken and when you're, when you're out of the cell and, and there's a lot of allegations like that. So I just wasn't sure if you were concerned about anything else. Um, no. Okay. Um, I am concerned about the documents that have been removed from my cell. I do feel like that is, um, I'm worried about that right now and I feel like that's unfair. And I feel like that is, that was a form of retaliation in my mind. Is there anything you regret from 2012? I'm not here to talk about 2012, I'm here to talk about today. But if people see this and they're watching this, what do you want them to know about your self-defense claim from 2012? I'm not here to talk about 2012. And I told you that before I came in here. I know. Uh, but I'm also a journalist and I'm going to be fair and I'm going to ask the questions across the board okay. that, that we're going to ask. Um, I guess we'll see you uh, August, if that still holds true. I know it's been delayed a few times. It's been delayed a few times. It could, I mean, so, I'm, I'm assuming it will go to trial in August, but I don't know. Um, I know there are a number of things your attorneys, uh, you can get cut away. Cut away. Um, I know there are a number of things your attorney's trying to, to get tossed out and they're going through all that normal, uh, that normal stuff from text messages and uh, statements made uh, prior to your rights being read, at least that's what they're claiming. So I guess it's possible this trial might look a little different than, than the first one. Um, I'm not sure. I are guess you, we'll are you take, will you take the stand in this? You'll be called, I would assume. I mean, you took, you took the stand last time. I didn't take the stand at the last trial. Could have sworn you did. No? Mm. Am I thinking the record? I may be thinking of the record of the videos then. I didn't take the witness stand at my first trial. I'm thinking, there's video that I'm thinking of though with you up on the stand. I took the stand at a sentencing hearing that was later. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. Um, so you don't know if that, there are any plans to change any of that at this point? Plans to change. The, you taking the stand then during this trial? I'll leave that up to, um, I'll make that a surprise. We'll, 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 we'll put that into surprise. Surprise. Yeah. Okay. Very well. Um, so what, what were you doing prior to, prior to 2012? Because I looked through some of the pictures on the Facebook post. Uh, what, was your life, what was your life like? What kind of person were you? Um, I was a college student. I had just graduated the University of Kentucky with my bachelor's degree in um, the spring of 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I walked at graduation in May. I received my diploma that summer. Um, I had just turned 21 that April, and um, I would say that I was a very um, fun college kid. Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing. And I had just begun my graduate school um, training when this happened. I had just started my master's degree. Uh, there's some pictures in there, like they look like modeling pictures. I don't know, did you do that for a little while too during college or was that just fun pictures that you were taking? Um, I did some modeling when I was in college, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you did a graduate program you were in, you were started, did you finish? You didn't finish I hadn't program. completed my master's degree when this happened. Okay. So. All right. Um, Michael's just getting some cutaway shots for editing purposes. It helps us edit, okay. edit stuff together. Um, so you grew up in like elementary school and high school and all that. Was that all in Lexington? Mm -hmm. And then you moved up? I grew up in Lexington, Kentucky. That's where I went to elementary school, middle school, high school. I graduated Paul Lawrence Dunbar in 2009. I graduated the University of Kentucky with my bachelor's of science in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I spent 21, 22 years in Lexington. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not from here. You didn't get a chance to see the uh, Kentucky Derby though, did you? I've been to the Kentucky Derby twice. Yeah? Yeah. Did you see the recent one? Did I they, didn't get to see it. You don't it have on. access to TVs in here? Well, I, I'm not in a cell where they, or there's a television. I've, okay. yeah, I watched it last year. Yeah. 
does it bring home any like home feelings whenever you get a taste of the big hats and the mint juleps, you know, and all that. Just yeah, I, I loved the Derby. It was a good time. It was yeah. always a fun time. I never understand the big hats. Really? I just don't. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. I, uh, thank, thank goodness I wouldn't be the one having to wear it. Um, okay. Well, Shane, I certainly appreciate your time. Um, I know what you had asked and asked us not to stay away, and I think your answers were fine to say, I'm not here to talk about that, and that's, and that's fine. I just uh, want to let you know as a journalist, though, I have to ask those questions. Okay. Um, so, um, and stay in touch. Uh, I will let you know. Uh, I'll write you again. I don't know how many days I wrote you back on Monday. It probably went out Tuesday in the mail. So it, it probably That's takes awesome. at least two days probably to get here. So today or tomorrow, you're going to get the letter I wrote saying I'll be in touch soon, basically. Before I go, um, I just want to emphasize, um, you know, I don't know if Keisha had that from me before I said this or not, but. Uh, but. Hold that um. Okay. Okay. Before I go, I just want to emphasize um, how much I love um, Richard and um, how real that is to me. And, um, how much he loves me. I don't know if you've gotten a chance to speak with him or if you're going to. Uh, just through the, e the writing of the letters so far. Um, so. Well, when you speak with him, <laughs> um, if you do, um, he's a wonderful person and he's been through a lot. He's had a really hard life. He's had a lot of um, obstacles to overcome. And um, I, trust, I trust him with all my heart and um, he trusts me and um, I have a deeper connection with him than I've ever had with anyone in my life mm -hmm. of be opposite sex or same sex. Uh, it, that doesn't matter to me. And um, this is no kind of <laughs> joke. Um, we genuinely love each other. And um, I was just grateful to have, to have met um, Unique during my time here. Um, in Campbell County. It was a blessing. So. Do you think people can change? Yeah, I do. Yeah, but I don't... I think some people are misunderstood. I think some people are not bad, and then they change. I think some people are doing things in their lives that are misunderstood, and they grow up. You know, six years have passed. I'm a lot older than I was. He's a lot older than he was when, you know, his journey in the justice system be, be, be first began. And um, I'm very proud of him. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care what anyone says. I think, um, I think he's compassionate, kind, caring, loving. I know he would never hurt me. Um, I know he would never hurt um, anyone that I love. Um, and... I trust him with all my heart. Would you ever hurt him? No, no, I would never, because he would never hurt me first. He would never hurt me first. I would never, he would never hurt me first mm -hmm. and I would never hurt him because we don't hurt each other. That's not what we do. Our relationship's not about hurting each other. It's about loving each other. So how have you changed? You, re you referenced that you're much older now and that you've changed. So how have you changed? I how are you I've... different than October, 2012? I think I've grown up a lot and um, I think I've been through a lot and um, I think I was a young girl um, then and I think I'm a woman now and I think that... Um, Do you think you would handle situations differently now then? Yeah, I think I would handle things differently now as a 27 year old than I did as a 20, 21 year old. And also, I believe that unique has regard for another person's feelings and um, is would never hurt me, would never hurt me first to begin with. But that's a big statement that you say there. And I know, again, you don't want to talk about your case, but that for people at home to hear whenever I ask you how you've changed and what that change is, when you talk about being older and wiser and, and how you would handle things differently, that's a, that's a big statement. You may not realize it, but that's, that's a big statement 
for people to hear that if that same situation played out today, it wouldn't play out that way. That's a big statement on your, your part. Don't I you think? I, I guess it is, but I do believe that I've been through a lot in my life since then, and I'm, I'm a lot more mature. Um, I have more experience with people. I've had to live around people in close, in a close confined space right. for many years, and. Um, but to say that you've changed so much that if that same scenario played out now, it wouldn't be handled the same way that it would be handled in a more mature way. That's quite a statement, on your your half. Sure. Sure it is. Um, I, I also believe that. Um, this person and I are right for each other. And um, maybe years ago, that wasn't the right person. And so things weren't, we didn't understand each other as well. And Unique and I understand each other a lot better. We're very honest with one another, you know. There's something to be said about soulmates. Yeah. I appreciate your time. And as soon as I get word back from the clerks and everyone on the license and what's going to happen or whatever, I'll, uh, you may find out even before I do, but I'll write you and let you know what I find out as we progress through this. Okay. Um, you know, and I also just want to emphasize um, that we're, we're only contacting you all to make sure that those rights are respected and that this process is not thwarted because of who we are. That's what we were afraid of going into it, is that it would be thwarted because of who we are and because of the things that we've done in our lives that people are judgmental about, obviously. And, um, you know. It can be misunderstood. It, it can be misunderstood, yes. Sure. And that people wouldn't be, we, we, we truly believe that some powerful people wouldn't be happy for us and would want to prevent this from happening. So your desire is that by August, if that's the trial date, um, by August you would be Mrs. Shana... Michelle McBee. Because obviously he can't file an official change of name and go by Unique at this point. I assume he could go through the process, but the expenses and everything. He could, else. yeah, but that's the name that I believe we, we will use. It's a family name. Where would you settle down if you get out, if you're free? I haven't thought that far into it. There's, it's a big world out there. You feel like the world's a little smaller now that you've gone through yes, this? Yes, I do. I feel very hated by a lot of people and I feel scared to live in certain areas. So. Mm. As does he, so. Right. All right. Same. And, um, you know, we're just, we appreciate your all's time and help in facilitating um, anything um, to ensure that our rights are not disrespected, you know? Well, we will, we will tell the story of your request and what you're going through and, and we'll have to wait and see what the timeline is for the request to be um, accepted. We have to confirm that they've actually received your request since it's been uh, seven days and not counting the weekends because they're not going to do anything on the weekends, obviously, being a government agency. No offense, government agencies, but um, so once we get confirmation that they've received it, and we'll try to find out what the game plan is moving forward. Okay. All right. I appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Can we take the mic off now? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, okay. So in your in your cell, how big yeah. is your cell? It's like nine by twelve. Can you set? Okay. Um, do you do you get like reading materials you get to keep in there? Law materials? Because I know you go to the library and well, stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. My legal work was taken from sure, me right. yesterday and taken over to the administration office and it's not been returned to me. So. I wasn't sure if that was when you go to the, the library and you, you print out things and you write and then you can bring it back in there. 
do you check out books? Are you able to check out no, law I books? No, I don't check out books here. I've seen that done in other jails where yeah. they moved me around in 2016 when I was shipped around. Here, you're allowed to have books dropped off at the jail to read. Oh, okay. Yeah. Amazon? Can people like ship Amazon books we to you? We can have books shipped in, but books can be dropped off on Saturday and Sunday at a certain time. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. How's your food situation? It's not too, it's not too great. Which place have you been at so far as, as you moved around has had the better, better food? Casey County Jail had the best food. They cooked their food in a garden, and it was actually, it was like Cracker Barrel nice. It was great food. <laughs> Crack, to be compared to Cracker Barrel. It was Cracker right. Barrel nice. It was home cooked. Is there any way that I could receive a transcript of this? Or um, we typically don't um, supply transcripts of, of full interviews. The story itself, once it's done, will be online. Okay. I think you have online access, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it'll be it'll be published and, and put out online. Okay. So you'll have access for it there. Um, the website should actually be on my business card, which is in the letter that you should receive either today or tomorrow. Okay. So I wasn't sure um, how fast this was going going to uh, to happen because sometimes we put in these requests in different counties and it doesn't happen. Right. So. Um, and if you want to talk further, um, you know, after it airs and after, you know, if there's an actual ceremony, I mean, when that, if that day comes and, and we're allowed to, to be here for it, then why not? Okay. If you'll allow us. So it's obviously a sure decision. Okay. Thank you. Will you be speaking with Richard as well? Um, we have the, the information I have to uh, put in. That's a whole separate request. So this was, this was all happening this morning. So we're kind of dealing with one request at a time. Okay. So, uh, but I certainly have, I mean, his, his admiration um, is, and I have another letter still yet um, at the office. So this is four pages here talking about you specifically and his, uh, his love for you. I, I thought it was funny in here that he goes, the reason because that's why I asked you, you know, why we chose Channel 9. And uh, he put in his letter that uh, we chose 9 on your side because you guys seem to have no fear in pissing people off. <laughs> <laughs> Something she and I do without even trying. Right. Um, so I was like, all right, I guess that's what we're, uh, that's what we're known as. All right. But uh, so anyway, I have lots of documentation from him. And I'll just have to see how the request goes okay. and, and take it from there. And like I said, you can also use that Facebook, um, that Facebook page, the other one um, that's run by Larry, Ro Larry Rowland in Virginia is the one that runs that. This that one? one? Yeah. Larry Rowland. Okay. And how, what is his relation? He's a friend. Just a friend. Okay. Yeah. He's a friend. How do you access the pictures to send him? Um, they were pictures I had on my old Facebook. Yeah. Years ago. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's since been taken down and. Your old, your old Facebook page? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore. Okay. Yeah. I know he says he blocks and bans a lot of people that comment on there, too. Yeah. Um, okay. Are you good? Yeah.